gets divorced after a long time together, life for them will never be the same and neither will their finances. Everything has to be split up. But maybe not the way Goldie Horn did it in the First Wives Club. Check it out. All the good stuff goes. The Lampica, the Ming vase, Amari porcelain, the Fabergé eggs, that wingback chair, that green Tiffany lamp. Babe, Lisi, what's going on? Well, as per your request, I'm consolidating all the assets we've acquired during our marriage for liquidation. I think that would include all of these things. I bought you these antiques. You are the best. Love tokens, anniversary gifts, junk. Here, take that desk, too. Elise, this hurts me. I care about you, about us, uh, about the magic. What exactly is going on here? And this Japanese secretary. I want that to go. Back off, Jacko! Elise, this isn't right. It's hormonal. You can't do this. Watch me. But th this is my stuff! It's the 90s, Bill. Downsize. <laughs> <laughs> what a divunk. Ivana Trump in the movie says, don't get mad, get everything. Um, so how do you bounce back from divorce uh, when the money side gets sorted? Well, we have financial planning expert and author Helen Baker with us to tell us how. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if you have a, a Ming vase to sell after your, uh, after your divorce, that's pretty great. But um, you say women are often much worse off when it comes to a split. Why is that? So it's probably two aspects. The first aspect, what I'm seeing is people are not getting financial advice before they sign on the dotted line. And so they make all these mistakes that they weren't aware were going to be mistakes and they walk away with less to begin with. So classic example is buying, buying maybe the Ming bars, taking the Ming bars. <laughs> It doesn't really generate anything. It's mm. nice. Mm. But is that an emotional decision or is that a financial decision and how does that fit in the future? Mm -hmm. And then the second aspect is obviously we've got this gender pay gap issue, mm. which means women earn less. So the man's ability to recover is faster because he earns more. Right. And secondly, we have less super than men, which means they end up with more super as well. Can, so I, can I raise that super issue? Because I've, I've seen this happen where... So the woman's been with the bloke they've raised the kids, she's been there through a huge chunk of the marriage, then second wife comes along and she gets all the super. Right. Is there a way of preventing that? Yeah, absolutely. So at the start, the benefit is making that decision about whether you take some of his super at that point, because again, you go back to the women being the primary carer, earning less, more time out of the workforce. Doing all the so, unpaid work. Mm. Right. And so then it comes back to the second stage, which is who are you leaving your super to? So is it going to your new partner or is it going to your former partner? Where is that? Has that all been sorted out with superannuation and the will? Mm. What does the law actually say? Because we all know in reality, uh, you know, two doesn't go into one. So you've got two incomes. You've right. Got, the house doesn't go. So what does the law say about when you split? So that's always a, that's a legal question. Yeah, but, but basically overview. they take yeah they take in a considerable what they call four different steps. So the first one is um, what is in the asset pool to start with. Mm -hmm. Secondly, what are the contributions that were made? So let's just say you get married, you walk in with two million dollars. Um, the other person walks in with none and it's all over within a year or two years, it's unlikely to be a 50-50 split. Mm. So things that will change that dynamic are having children together, the duration of the marriage mm -hmm. or de facto relationship also counts. So all of those come into play. The third part is then looking at what the future needs are. So mm -hmm. has the wife had so much time off work that she can't go and get a job for quite some time or are there health issues? Mm. And then, yeah, yeah, from there. What about the house? Let's assume one scenario is you've been in the house with children for quite some time. Should you dig your heels in and stay? Yeah, this one's one where mistakes are often made. So. By nature, we as women are wired for financial security and we like our own home. We want to put our pictures on the wall. We want to nest there. So there's an emotional attachment generally to the home. There can also be an attachment to the home around children and schooling because if they're in that area, they want to still be going to those schools or the sports. But if you take the house at the exclusion of any other investments, that could get you in trouble. The other issue is, does the, the home come without any debt? Can you service the debt? Or does mm. it mean you take the house and you can never go mm. on holidays, can't repair the roof? Mm. At some point, are you forced to sell that home because the rest of the pieces of the puzzle don't fit together? They say the only person that really gets rich out of a divorce is the lawyer. <laughs> mm. uh, 
should you bring the lawyer in? Is, is that the way to do this? Yes. Yeah, so everybody pretty much knows they need a lawyer. I would argue you need three on your team of specialists because this is a whole new world. So firstly, the lawyer. The second one I think you need is the emotional part. So probably a counsellor or psychologist to help you through the process, deal with when you get a nasty text message or something like that. And then the third one is this financial piece, which is where I'm seeing people don't do that. They come after they've signed on the dotted line and then they've made Too all late. the mistakes. Mm. A lot of us go into relationships thinking that love will conquer all, but we have to be a little bit more realistic, don't we? And uh, one of the things, I suppose, when you do go into a relationship or a marriage that you should consider is a prenup. But also, um, you, you, I think women need to be just as invested in the family finances. Um, I'm hopeless at this. I let my husband do everything in terms right. of the money because he's just better at it than me. And I do other things around the house that um, that frees him up. But we were speaking to one our insurance broker and he was saying that he was looking after a woman whose husband left her out of the blue and she discovered post-marriage of all of these investment properties that he had on the side, the way he was funneling money and hiding it from her. Yep. So she almost missed out on all this extra stuff because right. she hadn't invested her own time and energy into it. Yeah, and I've seen situations like that. So one of the things with good financial advice where you're meeting on a regular basis, whether it's six <sighs> monthly or annually, all of that will be brought to the surface before you split. Mm. So you'll know what's actually going on. But I agree with you in terms of, you know, we can't do everything you have to play to the strengths, but mm. I say still be across it yeah. so you don't get caught, even if you're going to allow that person to manage the money. But there's also what they call STDs, sexual uh -huh. transmitted <laughs> death. Uh, and that can be just as, uh, you know, challenging. Should you use a condom for that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we do financial condoms, do we? Well, it's a prenup. <laughs> yeah, but well, it is hard for some women to all of a sudden, after several years of marriage, go, oh, I want to know what's going on. Mm. That's awkward. Uh, so if uh, you split, as your example, yeah. is there a way you can come back afterwards saying there wasn't disclosure? It's probably considered to be fraud if mm -hmm. you haven't disclosed. So again, it's about getting all of those, that information up front, getting the lawyers to sign off, getting mm. everything agreed that that was the truth. And then, yeah, you'd have to speak to a lawyer about whether you can go back. So with your experience, biggest couple of biggest issues that women should absolutely do and think about. I think is definitely about getting that advice financial advice before you settle because mm -hmm. we often don't know we don't what we don't know and we often don't understand the consequences of the decisions that we make until they're material and mm -hmm. it ends up being way more than what you probably paid your lawyer. Yeah, you're seeing some great tips on the screen now. Don't rely on a lawyer for everything. Negotiate on what works for you. Have a financial plan pre and post settlement. Rebuild for the future um, and that's about it. You can and read more um, about how you can get back on your feet after divorce or marriage breakdown with Helen's book. It's called On Your Own Two Feet, Divorce. Mm. Helen, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to meet you. Thanks. Okay, coming up next, an